Coming up today on the St. Paul Forum, we've got Tracy Nelson of the St. Paul Eastside Lions Club, and we're going to talk about Harvest Fest. Oh, good. Thank you for having me. Um, you are a longtime East Sider. I am. Life, lifelong St. Paul resident. Uh, I, I, lifelong East Sider, no matter what. Once you're there, you're always, you know, once one, always one is kind of our, our motto. Um, I currently live in Little Canada and have for about a decade, but oh, yeah. I still work and do most of my doings in St. Paul for sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, born and raised uh, in East St. Paul. And uh, yeah, I, I love that area going up into uh, Venice Heights and a uh, little Canada and yeah. all the lakes and uh, some pretty little neighborhoods tucked away. Yeah, and you'd be surprised at how many of my neighbors went to Johnson oh, yeah. <laughs> or East St. Paul Lutheran School or places that uh, I went as well, so or my children went. Yeah, uh, where'd you go to high school? I went to Harding and Johnson. Oh, yeah, so okay. I'm a night gubby. You were a night and a gubby. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. I, I went to Harding for my freshman, uh, junior, and senior year, and I went to uh, Johnson for my sophomore year. But the friends that I made at Johnson, just that little bit that I was there, uh, are still my friends today, at not mm -hmm. uh, on the majority. And there's quite a few of them that are in the Lions Club with me. So uh, even our nice. current president, yeah, current president Bob Clarity went to Johnson when I went there. and. Are you an officer in that? Um, I am a past president, okay. um, a past membership chair, but I am the current uh, events chair, events chair. Okay. for the St. Paul Side Lions Club, yes. Okay. So um, it's all about the buttons. Um, well, we have a, a lot going on, but the buttons are a big, big part of that. And um, I know we were talking a little earlier that our buttons program actually starts in the spring every year with a drawing mm -hmm. contest mm -hmm. uh, where we try and initiate that civic engagement with the community. Um, but our actual buttons program uh, treasure hunt, which is new this year, the treasure hunt that's associated with the buttons program, goes from September 9th through the 19th. People yeah. can register their buttons, go out on this fun East Side treasure hunt, find their clues on our website and or mm -hmm. Facebook, and uh, win $250 as a grand prize, which is fun. So it's uh, the 12th today. Yep. Um, uh, so the, as we're taping, the treasure hunt is still going on. Yes, it's going on currently, for it sure. Ha it hasn't been found yet. Has not been found as of today. What What is the, the item that you're... It is a medallion. It's so it's very similar to the Winter Carnival treasure hunt. In fact, yeah. we're even on the Cooler Crew, crew calendar, so that makes it even more fun. And our map is uh, geocached, so if you Google any address and you're on the east side, you're going to see all these little icons come up, which is the background of our button this year, which is also on the medallion. And uh, each one of those little icons are representing a business that has purchased a button board from us and has those buttons for sale. Uh, so people can get them registered, go out there and have fun, and then save on Harvest Fest weekend. That's that's how the program started. We wanted to give a savings pass mm -hmm. uh, to right. and an invite to the neighborhood to come out and enjoy the neighborhood Harvest Fest weekend. And the savings start September 21st and go through the 24th. Okay. What are what are some of the other events that, that people are going to want to come out and, and participate in? Well, there are quite a few, and there's a few before the weekend. Uh, Papa's focus is pretty much on Harvest Fest Saturday because they produce our parade, which is a, a big, big deal to us all. We love mm -hmm. our big parade. And the festival that will follow uh, down next to the Ward 6, in between Ward 6 and um, Kendall's Ace Hardware. Um, tell, tell us where Ward 6 is. That's on Payne? Payne Avenue, just... Uh, north of the Phelan Boulevard. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But with our Lions Buttons program that goes the 9th through the 19th, to culminate that on the 20th, September 20th, the Wednesday before Harvest Fest weekend, we are having our first annual Harvest Festival Awards Dinner. Mm -hmm. That's going to be at the American Legion at 6 p.m. Okay. And a uh, little social hour, and then we go into our dinner, and right afterwards our awards ceremony, which will be giving the $250 grand prize to the treasure hunt winner. Mm -hmm. 
uh, acknowledgement to the businesses that participated in the Buttons program, which 46 businesses, quite a few. And then the student that drew the background of this year's picture, which was an eighth grader from Hope Community Academy. So we want to make sure that they're all uh, acknowledged and part of the fun and get ready for the weekend. We're also having a bunt cake competition. So if anybody's a big bunt cake person, please come to the dinner and bring a bunt cake. That's and, how we will. And I think you told me that there's a hot dog eating contest. Yep, yep. And then uh, button special start on Thursday. So that'll be all over the neighborhood. Then Friday, we have the hot dog eating contest at Brunson's Pub. Mm -hmm. uh, formerly Schweitz's Saloon on Payne Avenue. They are having the hot dog eating contest for us at 6 o'clock. We mm -hmm. will have a number of teams compete, teams of four, oh. three minutes each. Okay. And whoever eats the most hot dogs will win the coveted winner award. Yeah, and that's a fundraiser for the parade. We give the proceeds to that, to PABA, to help uh, expand the parade for next season. So then Saturday morning, we have our fifth annual pancake breakfast, uh, Lions Pancake Breakfast at Arlington Hills Lutheran Church. That's mm. 115, 1115 Greenbrier Street. And at the pancake breakfast, we have our first annual Booyah to go. So we created this event so that people that were participating in the parade and the neighborhood that was gonna come out for the parade at noon had a place to gather before the parade and kind of make it the meeting place okay. and then be able to have some pancakes and camaraderie as well. Okay. And we invite uh, a number of different entities including Winter Carnival folks and the Vulcans and mm -hmm. um, yeah. PABA has had their safety meeting for the junior ROTC youth that volunteer for the parade every year. We usually get about 30 to 40 cadets from Washington Magnet School uh, that make our parade the safest and cleanest parade in town, which is cool. Uh, at that safety meeting, they meet with the police commander, all of the board of director parade spotters, and then the, the team of uh, students from the junior ROTC program. They have a safety meeting. They're each handed out a trash bag, and they are set up by their master chief two per block all the way down the 10 block parade route for extra eyes on the parade. And then they have trash bags, so when the parade ends, they pick up the parade route. Nice. And people aren't as susceptible to throw things on the ground when there's a child standing there. I mean, these are teenagers, <laughs> yeah. but you know what I mean? Yeah. So there's some accountability there, but it really nice. makes our parade the nicest and safest and cleanest parade in town, so. So you've been involved in uh, doing a lot of activities in support of uh, the east side of St. Paul. Yep. One of the first things that you told me that you did was to organize a Facebook page for people that love East St. Paul. And, and mm -hmm. What made you want to do that? Um, well, being born and raised there, I think I've always loved it. And I think we've all shown our, our love for it in different ways. But one of our slogans, I think, for most of us, everybody's heard it if they've been from the East Side or uh, been there at all. It's once one, always one. Uh, anyways, but when I started this group about nine years ago, my daughter showed me how to get on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And I, I didn't really know what was going on, but once I figured it out, uh, I, it, it came to me one day that I could give it an outlet uh, for some good for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing some market analysis in uh, the neighborhood I grew up in off of Fifth and Ruth, kind of the Eastern Heights area of St. Paul. Mm. There's 57 different neighborhoods on the east side, and it encompasses on over- On the east side. On the east side and it encompasses over 100,000 residents. Uh, the borders are downtown Larpenter, McKnight, 61. Yeah. So it's a huge, huge area. That's, it's St. Paul, uh, but it is the east side of St. Paul or yeah. East St. Paul. And where the East St. Paul name came from, I'm not sure, but I know it originated somewhere in the Harding area, uh, East St. Paul Target, Mm -hmm. uh, we talked a little bit about East St. Paul Lutheran School. It used to be called East St. Paul Holiday Inn. I think it's called mm -hmm. Hotel Metro now. Um, but it's kind of spread all over the neighborhood, which is great. And so when I went into these homes and did these market analysis, there was about three in a three-week period of time. Uh, gracious people, older people that had been in the neighborhood for decades, welcomed me in and had me sit down. And all three of them, within the first two minutes, apologized and said, oh, we know the neighborhood's not what it used to be. And it just kind of hurt my soul. And I thought, well, what do you mean? And no, of course it's not. It's gonna change over the years. Every neighborhood has a lifestyle. As a real estate broker, I, I see a lot of neighborhood changes in a lot of different places. Um, but then we get to talking and I tell them about things that they haven't heard because most people only hear about the neighborhood from what they've heard from the news, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And not trying to knock the news, but you know, drama sells, right? right. So, yeah. you know? 
Anyways, the feel-good stories are 99% of what happens. 1% is the crime and blight, but that's all people sometimes hear about. And I thought we really need a, a, a place, a venue to say, hey, you know, it's not all that takes place here, and that, that little bit doesn't speak for the rest. So that became the group East St. Paul on Facebook, and it started out with some uh, simple posts about remembering the old drive-in, Minnehaha drive-in up on Minnehaha oh, nice. and McKnight, right? Nice. Or the ground round over on Suburban. Mm. Um, or things like Harvest Festival from back in the day. And I guess we have a larger database of pictures than anyone else, including uh, Minnesota Historical Society, from what I understand. Wow. So, yeah, 150 years of history How in the neighborhood. A little over 24,000 members in the group. <laughs> yeah, so it's grown to be fairly yes. popular. I and mean, there's people that I've got friends that live in Europe that I graduated with from Harding, because I graduated from Harding. And, uh, yeah, they're just like, it's so cool to be able to see what's going on in the neighborhood. Yeah. So um, you've done a lot of work with the Lions. You've also yep. done work with, with ES, ENT, and yes. PABA, yeah, yep. Baba. <laughs> just about all the business associations, yeah. Yeah, yeah I like uh, to be involved. If I can help, I, I like to help. So you've been in real estate for quite a while, uh, uh, running your own uh, business, Parkway. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's family tradition. Family. Yeah. Um, my son, who is my lead broker now, he's the fourth generation in our family, and I've been doing it for 22 years. So, mm -hmm. yeah, fourth generation broker. I'm kind of proud of that. And now you're working in that capacity for ESNDC. Correct. I'm the co-broker for ESNDC Real Estate Brokerage. Okay. So separate from the CDC, but owned by the CDC. Yeah. What kind of changes have you seen, or changes and trends have you seen in the markets on the east side? Have, have we recovered from, you know, 07, 08? I would say absolutely yes. Yeah. Um, I have shown probably every home in the neighborhood and surrounding communities in the last three months because I had a couple of buyers that were both similar. Mm -hmm. and. I would say every offer we wrote, and some of these buyers, you know, one buyer in particular, seven offers, wow. and they were all multiple offers, and we'd lose out because we didn't bid enough. And these are going for ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars over the pricing. Oh. So these are pre-crash pricing properties, and they're going for more than that. So yeah, I would say yeah. absolutely. And it's nice to see the the neighborhood uh, kind of evolve into its new life cycle. You know, it kind of had the uh, a real low moment with the foreclosure crisis mm -hmm. and the vacancies. We had a huge amount of vacancies in the neighborhood. It's not just residential, but businesses. Yeah. And as the economies come back and there's more uh, homeowners in the neighborhood and new businesses which are flourishing, I mean, they're doing great. We just won that uh, Munch Madness that the St. Paul Pioneer Press had on for Payne Avenue. We're called Eat Street now in St. Paul. Right. Yeah, that's fun. Right? Nice. Um, it's nice to see that rejuvenation of the neighborhood through mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, occupancy and care. And so, and there's tons of development going on as well. So, so in terms of the housing, is it, are, are you seeing much new construction or tear down? Uh, there's not a whole lot of tear down in new construction, but there are new development projects for sure. Um, there is a, a project just down on the very west end of Minnehaha, but still on the east side of St. Paul, that there's the potential of 60 new homes being built there. Oh. Uh, we have a cluster homes project, a, uh, what are they called, the small houses. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a potential grade for that. There is a number of new units going in right on Payne Avenue. Uh, oh. The HRA lot has been sold there between Ward 6 and Ace Hardware. Is there and still land? To be, to be developed on that? Oh, for okay. sure, really? for sure. Well, and if we think about the Phelan Boulevard, uh, I was on the communications committee for the Phelan Boulevard when it was first coming online a little over a decade ago. Yeah. And the purpose of the boulevard was to recreate uh, a place of business and commerce, mm -hmm. uh, especially for larger industry, when the east side lost places like Whirlpool and the old 3M building down there and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and that is happening. Uh, okay. Beacons Bluff is getting developed. There's the new uh, family clinics, the health partners specialty buildings on the boulevard there, Highway Federal yeah. Credit Union. So there's a number of larger industry that's come back into the east side, and that's just going to get developed as the years go by. The, the 3M property, I, I actually I walked through the, 
that headquarters building when oh, when building 21 there was at least last time i was over there right. some, some um, land around that right people, what's happening there? that's all considered the beacons bluff area okay uh, St. Paul Port Authority has a large stake in that, and they've done some soil correction, getting ready for new commerce to come in. Mm -hmm. I've heard that the larger site to the, it would be to the southwest of where you're talking about Building 21, is mm -hmm. going to be developed into a, a, a large project. Okay. Uh, I heard, I heard like Walmart, but I don't know. I don't know. I, <laughs> so that's that's the gossip on the east side, right? Um, to the east of there, there is the new. It's called the. Um, West Side Clinic, East Side Family Center, so it's a new doctor's mm. office and facility. Mm. Mm. It's got some cool, like, retro artwork thing, oh. you know, that sits outside. But uh, mm. it's nice to see the area be developed. Just east of there, um, I want to say it's McQueen Manufacturing. They took over the old tile plant that was there, the asphalt shingle plant that was next to the Moonshine. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but no. I wa I'm watching the development coming, and then at the end of the boulevard, we've got Mung Village and uh, uh, mm. Phelan Village businesses and the grocery store and the townhomes and the senior co-op. So there's quite a bit happening. So, Tracy, um, a year ago, mm -hmm. first time, yep. you were running a campaign for state office. I was for a state uh, legislator, yeah. A district 42B. Correct. And so that is, is it? Um, Badness Heights, Little, Little Canada. Canada, Gem Lake, parts of Shoreview and Roseville. Okay. Yeah. Um, what made you want to run for, for state office? Um, well, it was suggested to me that I should consider it. Okay. Um, I'm a resident of Little Canada and have been for a little over a decade. Yeah. Um, my children all went to the 623 school district once they graduated from East St. Paul Lutheran School. Went to Concordia Academy High School and uh, Roseville High School for a year there with my oldest. Um, but we had a lot of family and friends and uh, business associates in the area and I think that they saw my opinions uh, lean towards their party and mm. never ran for major office before but I was asked to consider it and uh, took it into heavy consideration and decided to run for a uh, yeah, state representative on the GOP ticket. Have you been active in party politics? or? I really haven't. I mean, I have a, an opinion for yeah. sure. And when you have a group with, you know, 20 plus thousand people in it, your opinion ends up coming out, you know. Um, but I try to be fair about it. And I have a lot of friends. I mean, I'm, I'm from St. Paul. And, yeah. and most people know that the majority of St. Paul definitely leans left and or if they lean right, they don't say anything, you know. It's um, notoriously DFL right, territory right. where it's hard to get some traction if you're yeah. part of a different And that's group. okay. I mean, I think it's healthy to have everybody in the same room. Um, yeah. I, I feel like that's been part of my um, motivation to be involved as, as involved as I am yeah. um, because I'm definitely not one that stays quiet about it, mm. you know. And I think that you need a little bit of everybody in the room when you come to some of the neighborhood meetings and some of the business associate meetings yeah. um, to speak on behalf of people that are self-employed, for instance. Um, yeah. Being self-employed my whole adult life, that's, that's important. And I think a lot of people are more afraid of who they're going to lose out on uh, for them not see, you know, seeing their side of the equation than speaking up. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think everybody gets along pretty well when we talk about the fact that we're all trying to go for the same amount of good. It's a matter of right. we have different ways of getting there. You know? We well, did pretty well, 42%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have a takeaway from that experience? I mean, what it, was it? Oh, what, too what, many to mention. I mean, I really learned a lot. I, I met a lot of great people. Yeah. Um, I realized that people that are truly into politics kind of have their own language. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what side of the coin they're on. They all still, t it's all a, kind of a strategic conversation, you know, which you had, it took me a little bit to get used to that. but. You know, other than that, people are just people when it comes down to it, so. Well, do you think you'll um, run again for your office? I have considered it. Um, last year, I, I don't think I really understood how much time it would take to run a successful campaign. Yeah. And uh, even though I'm, I'm good at doing 20 things, it was tough because it was the year my granddaughter. My granddaughter was born December 
uh, 13th of 2015, and then I went into running for office. So she was with me on most of my campaign. I mean, I just, I was like, you guys all have to come because I have to hold her. <laughs> I have to see her. It's Grandma's girl. So she's got t-shirts that say, vote for my grandma, you know. Is that legal? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I was kissing babies every parade, and it was my granddaughter, yeah. Hmm. So uh, now I'm having a grandson this year in October. Um, so I think that I just need to give it a little bit of time and, and give what I can to what I can here and then when I have more time on my plate to really dedicate yeah. to public office and I think that's a responsible thing to do as well. Yeah. Well, let, let's go, let, let's return to um, upcoming events. Yes. Okay. So this is the, uh, this is a very old tradition in St. Paul. It's the 111th annual East Side Celebration. Yeah, okay. so, and I mean, with a neighborhood that's got 150 years of history, mm -hmm. you know. So make your best pitch uh, for people to come out and enjoy, enjoy the neighborhood. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much what I do every day on Facebook. I post out there what the clues are or what the events are, tell them how they can save money and come out and have a fun time. And I say, bottom line, come out and love your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should be doing anyways. Is it uh, too late to buy a button? It is not, and they will be for sale all the way through Harvest Fest weekend as long as supplies last. Um, on our website, St. Paul East Side Lines, you can just Google St. Paul East Side Lines, you'll get to our website. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find a list of button locations, you can find the specials mm -hmm. that are going to be at those places throughout Harvest Festival weekend. You can get tickets to the events, which would be the Harvest Festival awards dinner, the pancake breakfast. Um, you'll get details about the hot dog eating contest on Friday night. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, you'll also have the ability to, today, because I'm not going to forget to do it today, put our geocaching link up there. You should be able, any place you, you know, put. You're gonna, I don't know what that is. What, what, what is. You know, I'd heard of it myself, but I didn't know what it was either until he did it. Okay. So there was a lion from our 5M6. This is like the big district. We have 42 Lions Clubs in this 5M6 district. Okay. Um, and we are one of those 42. And this, so this is for, you know, North St. Paul, Maplewood, Lions, you know, Burnsville, all the way around okay. this kind of East Metro area. Anyways, they took interest in our Buttons program and our Harvest Festival uh, events, since we have a number of them this year, and gave it to their technical advisor, who has a, a professional position in that realm, and said, I'm going to geomap this event. I said, well, that sounds exciting. I mean, great, what does it do? Yeah. And then he sent me the link and it was okay. cool. I wish I had the laptop so I could show you. But every one of the button locations, which is over 46 businesses that mm -hmm. are participating in the buttons mm -hmm. program this year, they all have a little picture. When you look on Google, Okay, so if I, it is looks like this. I can do on my phone if I'm? Yes, okay. yes. So, uh, well, for instance, when I Googled your address here, coming through the neighborhood to get here, because I work on the corner of Payne and Case, yeah. right, at Swedish okay. Bank Building. Right. When I put it in my GPS, I could see all of the little acorn locations, right? And it shows a little Lions Club symbol for all of the areas that have the Harvest Fest dinner, the pancake breakfast, the parade on Payne Avenue on September 23rd at noon. So uh, very, very neat. But I'm gonna be adding a link to it for our website as well. Uh, it's It's been spread all over Facebook, but. Tell me about the Lions Club. You know, I, yeah. I do not belong to a fraternal organization. Yeah. And, and um, I'm hearing the, just the vitality of activity. I mean, how, how yeah. are we doing for members? Worldwide, because we are an international organization, yeah. we have, uh, I think, a million and a half members globally. Yeah. Uh, locally, and, you know, it, it, goes down to continent and then country and then states and then mm -hmm. you know cities like the east side of st paul even though we're a third of st paul we have two clubs okay. st paul east side lions club we're kind of wiper avenue into the west right. wiper avenue into the east is the east park lions club and okay. uh, you're familiar with them whether you know it or not because they run all the parking and the bingo out of the ramsey county fair oh. so every time you go to the ramsey county fair you run into the east park lions club and uh, wow. most of our clubs will have signature events, whether they're taco feeds or spaghetti dinners, or some of them up in Scandia do the Ludafisk dinner, and 
but we do a lot of community and civic engagement events. Yeah. Um, our purpose as an organization is uh, being business and community members that want to come together on a true volunteer basis. Right. We pay to be members and then we give our time on top of it for fundraisers and service projects. Right. Uh, fundraisers, uh, our club has a mini donut trailer. So we do a few events throughout the year and make our little monies off of that. And Harvest Festival, it's not a big money maker for us, but we're really enjoying being a part of the community. But all the money we raise, we then give back to the neighborhood in one format or another mm -hmm. and support some of the international, Lions Club International uh, activities. Who should think about joining the Lions? Anybody who likes to have fun, because that's what we do. We have fun in the name of service, right? Yeah. That's literally our motto for the Lions Club. It's called We Serve. So, uh, but yeah, we, we have a good time. And our club has had a lot of changes over the past five, 10 years. So we have a lot of energetic people that wanna just get out there and connect with the neighborhood and have a good time and know that we're doing good for the neighborhood. So uh, is it, a, um, if you're a young person in business, are you gonna feel? Absolutely, I think absolutely. When I started in our particular club, uh, there hadn't been a whole lot of new membership in a number of years. Yeah. So I was probably two decades younger than, no, I wasn't. I was at least a decade younger than anybody else in the club at the time. Hmm. And then the majority, the average age of the club was about 72. Well, that's changed over quite a bit since then. The so, average age of the club was 72. Yes. Oh my goodness. I think a lot of retirees and yeah. things were in the clubs, but these people started when they were in their 30s, 40s, yeah. and 50s and have been members for decades, you know. It was that um, generation that did. Yeah. Join. We have members in our club that chartered in 1951 that have been in the club for 46, 47 years. Okay. So what's the so. makeup now? And is it, are there as many women in? The yes. Line? Yes. Are? So okay. our, our club actually in uh, the state of Minnesota had the first woman lion in any club. Uh, okay. So that was really neat. Back in the 80s, it was uh, Polly Hacht. Ted Hacht, in fact, her husband, used to run the Payne Avenue Parade. So that's kind of a neat tie-in. Uh, but Polly was the very first uh, woman lion. There was lioness groups and there's lions groups. Lionesses are just for women. Right, right. But lions clubs were exclusively till men until then. And yeah, we oh. had the first woman uh, become part of our club. And now our club is about half and half. Nice. So yeah, we all get in there and volunteer and participate. Well, we're gonna wrap this up. Um, any oh. last thoughts? Yeah, I hope everybody comes out and enjoys Harvest Festival one way or another. How's the weather gonna be? It looks like it's gonna be a little cooler. This week's supposed to be very warm and then it's supposed to cool off next week, but it's not supposed to be rainy from what I could see in the forecast. So perfect fall weather. Uh, Tracy, thank you so much. Um, appreciate you coming in and uh, telling us about the upcoming uh, festival activities and uh, what the Lions are doing, how the East Side is doing. And, yeah. Uh, so uh, that's it for today's forum, and we'll see you again next week.